Hello, it's a good time of the year when all the leaves are off the trees to see what you can do because you can see much clearer the leaves off the trees. This is the Dawn Redwood. It was believed to be extinct and only available in the fossil record. And then it was found growing in some part of China in, uh, I think, shortly after the Second World War and only in one village, I think. And it turned out to be very easy to propagate and grow. And it does very well in Ireland in similar similar climates. And even such a short amount of time, there's, there's horticultural variants that, that have been selected already that are different than the, than the norm. But anyway, if we look at that, this stage started off as a little Christmas tree we planted. Um, and um, I think we have to, what they call, crown lift it. So, in other words, when you mean by crown lifting, it's a term in used in, in tree surgery. It doesn't mean you lift the crown. It means you take away the bottom branches and it gives the appearance of the crown being further up, but it isn't. Um, uh, the thing about chainsaws is they're a good friend, but a bad enemy. And I'm only doing a little bit. I'm, I'm wearing um, the, the ear protection and I'm going to wear eye protection. If you're doing a lot of uh, chainsaw work, you might be as well off getting the trousers for knee protection is very important. Um, and um, just be careful, a lot of people are getting presents of electric chainsaws. They don't appear to be as dangerous because they don't make any noise, or very little noise. They're just as dangerous. Don't be lulled into a false sense of security with an electric chainsaw. There we go. Health and safety gone mad. We'll, we'll stop at that. We don't want to do a father Ted with the car and end up with nothing. We'll take all this out and then have another look. You see the way I started off by not cutting them the whole way in? 
the important thing initially is to just get enough room that you can work safely and be very very careful when you're using a chainsaw of your knees you only get one set of knees not like your teeth you get two sets of teeth but one set of knees so be very careful go in there and the chainsaw goes in there and it's game over okay so let's have a look lovely trunk uh this john redwood has a very nice good redwood very nice trunk strong right i think that's gonna be okay that's job number one now job number two um we raked we stripped all these up on the camera the last time and we went and we went and did the rest and it's very open and which means the prairie garden is going to get lots of light and we haven't had to remove one single tree um besides birch besides the ordinary birch silver birch pink bark birch we also have scots pine and scots pine is native to ireland but a typical irish there's no irish there's no scots pines in ireland even though native to irish in native to ireland and they're called scots pine what happened is they, they're in the fossil record in fairly recent. I think when man ca uh, people came to Ireland first, they got rid of them all. It's just They just all disappeared. So any Scots pine in Ireland were reintroduced, but it's still regarded as a native. It is one of the most beautiful conifers there is. It is equally as good of any of the five needle pines, the three needle pines, the uh, Mexican pines, the Japanese pines. The Scots pine is one of the most decorative conifer trees you can get and the great thing about it is unlike a lot of say cypress type conifers it gets open and light as it gets older so it doesn't it doesn't block it doesn't obscure it has most beautiful bark for on the not the very old wood or very young wood the medium age wood lovely beautiful red bark absolute cracker of a tree and the foliage is a lovely blue hue to it so the scots pine absolutely amazing tree and unlike unlike like most pines it will do in windy situations I've, I've clumped them down over there so we have a look that's what we do i don't not any intention of doing this but i'll show you a clump of scots pine i planted about 10 years ago and we cut this out david mm -hmm. oh but look, look at just look at the uh, magnolia that's uh um elizabeth with a yellowish hue and you can see it has space now from the birch it, it was all, it was starting to go out like that you could see it was going out but now it can go straight up and the same with this lovely tree and dogwood you can see it's actually you can see the way it's just going away trying to get the light and now it has the light it has the light and look at this here japanese maple in its winter coat it's a lovely golden, a very, a very unusual golden stemmed one. I forgot its name. And oh, as I'm here, we're going to do a job here this year. We're going to re reinstate all uh, the edging and we're going to remove these hydrangeas because we have hydrangeas further on and I want something with a different type of leaf. So we're going to remove them and we're going to plant. Um, a hardy, strong grown hardy fuchsia called Graceless in its place. I have them grown on the side. They're going to go there. And we're going to remove this this uh, rose. It's a rose, rose of ragosa of some sort, sort. And these herbaceous here. This is a very good filipendula. I don't know what's name. But really, really good. I'm totally lost. So we're going to lift this and bring it out to about, widen the path to about here. Because you know, after the lockdown, a lot of our customers they need that extra bit of space. No, oh, cut that, definitely cut that. Oh yeah, the thing about the thing about all this lockdown and stuff, it's annoying everybody, of course, but you have to go with the flow, as they say. But I think of the year in terms of plants. To me, look at look at starting off already. Areas. But I think of the year in terms of snowdrops, crocuses, daffodils, tulips, bluebells, wild garlic, roses, hydrant. No, yeah, roses, 
hydrangeas, butterfly bushes, and then to finish off the year, butterflies. Butterflies. Well, this um, this is our little mound, and it's got Scots pine mound. And basically, what happened when we made this garden here, we we soil over, and it would have cost me money to get it removed. Had to get a lorry in and pay some to remove it. So we just stuck it there, and what we do next? I uh, just planted pines and pop, and they've already changed the nature of the soil underneath. Pines have dropped a lot of needles, and the needles are slightly acidic, and the um, grass is dying away. So all I do once a year, and we get nettles instead, and brambles so once a year i just i just go along with my my long handled head shears and i just give it a quick shear and across they maybe could be could do with a bit of a crown lift and if you look in here you can see through into field next door and you can see the cattle grazing over there And the posh term for that is a posh term for that. It's called borrowed landscape. And look at the gate. I got the builder to make this gate, and I told him not to put any uh, paint in it or put any treatment on it to preserve it. I wanted it to go rusty. He thought I was mad. Builders sort of you're anyway artistic. Builders think you're mad because he said if one's spending all in getting the skate why, why can't i dip it and galvanize it it last forever but i wanted to look like it was there forever and that bit of chicken wire which which ruins the look and that's to stop the rabbits coming in chicken wire for rabbits you use rabbit wire for chickens okay i'm going to do more up here look at in here just have a quick look in here what do we do here? We could probably remove some of these leaves. Probably could, but we want to be very careful that you don't go way in and get onto the, get down to the mineral soil because then you get a host of little weeds. Because they act now if you're lazy you would leave them. But they, there's probably a bit too much. So I might give a very light raking and still leave a good layer of organic matter underneath. And look at here and notice. the lovely white flowered aconitum beautiful and um, poisonous as well but beautiful flower look at it's off it goes off it's gone it's gone doing really well and um, they weren't particularly good this year um i find that some of the, these hellebores they do not like a lot of leafage on top of them because it gives them the uh, um, gives them leaf blocks you have to be careful with them uh, i think the, uh, the the sort of with me, if it's stuff like that, you're nearly better off with sort of looking a bit blotchy. You just remove. It tends to reflower, and then the later flowerings don't have the problem. But I, I think about hellebores, plants like that. I would never plant large clumps of them because there's too much work going through. If you have just one or two, you can take your time. But if you have 50, you couldn't be going around doing 50. But okay, that's that. That's the leaves. I haven't made my mind up what to do, whether to leave them. Leave the leaves. Or take them up. And this was, we removed the bottom. We we we, um, we cut all the bottom pieces from the ivy, so the ivy is going to die, and that's going to open up. Can it be better again? The light for the prairie garden. So what we're going to do here is just have, got this as a present, lockdown present for myself. Have to treat yourself. Have a look.
you know, we just, that's enough. It was just to, it was just to show, look at this. Last year's little birdie's nest. Oh, a little blue tit or something. It's lovely, isn't it? Make a new nest every year. And look at that. That's a bit of man-made fiber of some sort. The birds are using the plastic as well. Oh, it's bad. Um, if you notice now, there's actually, a, there's actually fork. There's so much ivy, you couldn't see the tree was actually forked from right down. But um, there's actually no need to do that because it would die away itself. But I just wanted to, uh, just wanted to get an idea of what it was going to look like. Now we were. I, I was going to cut all these away. I need to, I'm going to get rid of all that. It's too much, too much bamboo. And then I was going to use this. And I found the these ones, the ones that expand out. You get much better leverage. And if you're going in close, then you can where you can't get enough room, you can you can shorten them. But they are much better when they're lo the longer they are, the more leverage they have and the easier they are to cut. Now, I suppose if you were a professional, you would get a really much, much heavier one for it. But the average gardener, and this does me perfectly, it's really brilliant. It's actually Spear and Jackson, good, actually good make. Mid-range, price-wise. So, Mini Digger is going to come in and remove all this. And then the last thing, we're going to do is here this is all going to be cut back in a month and this is primarily one of the reasons i got this and we we'll just cut back a little bit just to show how i got this maybe Men love their toys. You know. Dead handy, maybe you can just play around with it to get it the right angle. Maybe I don't know, but um, we're, we'll cut the whole lot back in the end of February because it still looks okay. And the last thing we're doing, I on my phone, I made uh, notes. You see, the problem here. It's when I cut all this back, you won't be able to do any movement around until the stuff comes back up again because you won't know what's what. And you can still see what's what now because it hasn't, stuff hasn't died down. So you have a good idea of what's, what's there. So I, I have my notes. I have my notes here. I want to say changes. Remove Sangris Orbit and Persicaria, replace with dark red Persicaria. There's the there's the Sang It's one called Stand Up Comedian, and it's just too floppy. It's white, so that's going to come out. So we we'll take one out. We we'll take one out. We we'll have a look. Far too easy. You know, I sometimes see those gardening programs on the telly, and the gardener comes out and he's whacking away, and this thing comes up with two or three packs and you say yeah that was cheating that was dug up and put back down again i know it but this wasn't this was just pure fluke and we take this out and have a look so they're all going to come out and we'll we're going to replace them with something else can we have a look There's, that's a nice piece that could be planted somewhere else if you wanted to or you could pot it up and sell it but uh, I'm just show how to split plants
That's another piece. Snow hasn't started to budge yet. And that's a sign it comes from a country where they have very uh, hard springs and late summer, so it wouldn't bother uh, coming out this early when the days are so short because there's nothing in it for it. It'll wait until wait for longer. So that's another nice that's another nice piece. We probably I hate throwing them out. So we probably and it's a good it's a good plant, it's just a bit rich for it here. So I hate throwing it out, so we we'd probably put them on and sell them, get something for them. At least it's better than just throwing you know, waste. Even giving them away to someone. Better than I just hate the thoughts of throwing them out. But anyway, that's uh that's um our first video of the new year and I hope the gardening I know the garden's gonna get better as the year goes on and things are gonna get better overall as the year goes on because there is light as you know at the end of the tunnel at the end of the horticultural tunnel there's light every day but there is light for the rest of us and we'll come out of this awful darkness of lockdown and we'll have a great time and we learn to live again <laughs>